Hello, in this video on Warren Buffett, we will look at some of the other principles that guide the Omaha Guru. Okay, so what is a stock? Warren Buffett makes it very clear. He is never guided by market theories or macroeconomic concepts and does not research sector trends. Instead, he makes investment decisions based on how the business in question is operating. So he believes that people who make investment decisions superficially without looking at the foundations often withdraw when the first trouble ar arises. So, for a person who is too scared of investing, the probability of suffering a loss is obviously very high. So on the other hand, when considering investments, he learns about the selected company as much as he can and looks for answers to three questions. So first, if the company's activity is simple and understandable. The second, does the company have a long history of reliable operating results? The third one, does the company have a good long-term prospects? So let's take a closer look at one of these questions. So is the company's activity simple and understanding? Well, according to Buffett, financial success depends on how well the investor understands the company in which he is involved. Understanding the business of the analyzed company is what distinguished businesses and performance-oriented investors from the gorillas who simply buy stocks and then flee the market at the first negative signals. So it is very important to recognize the business side of the company you are buying and make a decision based on throughout analysis. So why? Well, simply because in the end, after collecting all available information, the investor must be firmly convinced that the company he or she chooses will prosper in the long term. So he must trust this forecast of the company's future profits. The greater this trust, the better he understands the foundations of the company's operations. So the future always plays tricks, but of course, it is much harder to forecast where you don't have any knowledge, right? So over the years, Buffett has invested in companies with very different business profiles. So from gas stations, through manufacturers of agricultural machinery, textile companies, large retail chains, banks, insurance companies, advertising agencies, aluminum and cement producers, newspaper publishers, oil extractors, minerals and other mines, food and drink producers, tobacco companies, television stations and cable television networks. So you can see it took so much time even to distinguish all of the sectors that he already invested during his, we can say, lifespan or investment career. So it took over some of this company in its entirety and controls them directly, while in others he bought minority stakes. Before any action, he was always throughout familiar with the activities of each of them. So Buffett analyzed a company's income and costs, cash flows, employee relations, price elasticity and the need for equity derived from profit. So he has been and is able to learn about each of the Berkshire companies because he is limited to investing in companies whose businesses he understands and whose finances he can control. He does not go beyond what he calls his circle of competence. It's logic and undeniable. If you have a company in whole or in part in an industry that you do not understand, you are not able to interpret information about it correctly and therefore you cannot make wise decisions. So invest in your circle of competence. What matters is not how big the circle is, but how well you define the parameters, advises the Berkshire boss. So critics of this approach argue that it imposes limitations on itself that excluded from investing in industries that offer the greatest investment potential, so especially technology companies. Here's his answer. Success in investing depends not on how much you know, but on how accurately you define what you don't know. So it is enough for an investor to do just a few things well, as long as he avoids making big mistakes. So experience has thought Buffett that above average results are often achieved by doing fairly average things. So the thing is, you have to do exceptionally well. As I noted a moment ago, only firms with a strong foundations and honestly performing their jobs are on Warren Buffett's white list of trust. So why that, what does it mean in practice? The head of Ber Berkshire on the pedestal puts the company's integrity towards its shareholders first and foremost. 
So for this investor, the most important thing is the transparency of the company's activities and honesty in providing information. This turns out to be extremely important when we take into account that the issues of the corporate world often come to light which you would probably want to sweep under the rug. So, in his career, Buffett has repeatedly praised the honesty of management understood as honesty, high credibility and scrupulousness of uh, the people managing a given company, right? So, due to this fact, he repeatedly exposed himself to ridicule in the business world, although, as we can see, sticking to such solid values for years turned out to be quite a success as a result, right? So he puts great emphasis on excellent management. The following words can be cited here. When we own portions of outstanding businesses with outstanding management, our favorite holding period is forever. Our favorite period of ownership is unlimited. So Buffett also believes that one of the most important things managers do that affects a company integrity is to make reasonable decisions about the distribution of the company's profit. So according to the Berkshire boss, if a company is generate excess cash that it cannot reinvest, the only solution that is reasonable is returning that cash to shareholders. So of course the company in question can return the cash in two ways. So first is paying dividends. The second is buying own shares. So is Buffett a fan of dividends? Well, according to him, the dividend would be profitable for the shareholder only if he could invest it better than the company. So yeah, simple math. I think that's it, reason reasonable. So it is for this reason that Berkshire Hathaway retains all profits while maintaining a consistently high return on equity. So its business is so profitable that according to Buffett, it would not be in their best interest to pay money to shareholders. In addition, he claims managers who decide to spend a large part of their profit on buying back the company's own shares show that the interests of shareholders are more important to them than the need to carelessly expand the structures of the organization. Buffett believes that only this attitude of the company attracts new investors who are looking for well-managed companies that add to their wealth. So shareholders of a company that buys its own shares are rewarded twice. First, they get immediate benefits from the companies buying them. And second, over the long term, the share prices rise as new investors engage in the company. So first one is, does the company have a long history of mini results? So if you ever wanted to, to find out more about what companies uh, Buffett selects, you've probably already noticed that, that the only selects companies for which he is strongly convinced. The belief that a given company will prosper and generate profits in the long run is fundamental. Not the fact that uh, it is uh, temporarily hot. Instead of hunting for fashionable companies, Buffett always has a long history of reliable results. Its assumption is that if a company offers the same product and the quality of uh, this uh, product does not change over time, and a given company shows a very satisfactory results year after year, these results, these results are likely to be continued in the future. So this is simple. Buffett selects only those companies that have been successfully in the market for many years and their operation is satisfactory and predictable, most importantly. So what does predictability mean in this case? So first of all, Buffett avoids buying companies whose direction of development is changing rapidly. The best scenario is that the company never makes radical changes and thus does not scare the existing shareholders. Such a company is not prone to stupid mistakes and it is not good because it has a promising vision for the future, which does not always work and in many cases does not translate into a big payback. And because it already has a solid current operational situation. So examples of such companies include the well-known Coca-Cola and for example Gillette. So do you know another company like Coca-Cola? Well, probably no company in the world has such a long history of results related to one the same product. The drink has been sold in its almost unchanged form since 1880s. So many years of Coca-Cola's activity shows that certain products are already so ubiquitous in our society and we need them so much that giving them up is almost a miracle. So we can say that we are kind of addicted to them. So besides, what speaks for this company is not only the great profits over the years, as we all know, Coca-Cola is constantly expanding its scale of operations and investing in other industries without changing its main business model. 
So on the other hand, Gillette is characterized by the fact that although it offers a completely basic and common uh, for our times product, it has been a market leader for many years. The company has been a leading manufacturer of razor blades and razors since 1923. Maintaining this position required several hundred million investments in new products and better than competition. So this company is distinguished primarily by high innovation and patent protection of the implemented solutions. Because although it has enormous competition on the market, it adapts perfectly to various changes and constantly meets the expectations of consumers. So over the years of operation, Gillette has repeatedly, repeatedly adapted to the current market needs, expanding and changing its range and marketing, but constantly sticking to the simple but very clearly defined model of operation. Such companies are looking for Warren Buffett. So, and at this point, we smoothly move to the next criterion, which is good long-term perspectives. So Warren Buffett is looking for what he calls franchise companies. According to Buffett, the economic world is divided into a small group of franchise companies and a much larger group of companies whose products are not distinguished by anything special. That is, they do not have any advantage over the competition. So the investor defines a franchise company as a company that has built a kind of fortress around itself that provides a clear advantage over everyone else in a given industry. Such a company is we can say untouchable, too solid and too deeply entrenched in society to be able to beat its quality and services just like that. So according to Buffett, the key to investing is to determine whether a given company has a competitive advantage and whether this advantage is permanent, nothing that uh, the prospect is 20 to 30 years. So a franchise company is a company that meets the following condition. Number one, its products are needed and desirable. Number two, they have no close substitutes. Number three, they are offered in a market where prices are not officially regulated. The stronger the mode around the company, the more it, it attracts Buffett attention. So additionally, franchise companies have enormous economic power that makes them immune to inflation and economic rises. So meanwhile, non-franchise companies offer products that practically do not stand out from the competition which, despite huge marketing budget, cannot be distinguished so that their market value is significantly higher than the others. So companies selling standardized products give a low return, since their products are no different than the others, they can only compete with them in terms of price. And this severely limits their profit margins. So such companies often significantly lower their prices because their only chance of survival is to offer simply the cheapest product. So on the other hand, the mode company can manipulate its prices and consumers will in most cases be ready to pay for what they are used to. So that is the end. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.